it wasn't as if Tabitha had no control over what she was doing um, and like it was happening against her will. She was willingly cooperating with the Jezebel spirit to cause drama, strife, confusion, relationship breaches, and destruction. All traits of a Jezebel. The damage that she had caused behind the scenes when assassinating my character to others, in addition to um, my husband's character, uh, left a lasting impact. After nine months of maintaining the lies, she finally admitted it, you know. So now once again, I was having to discern if her admission was because she felt remorseful or if it was simply an attempt to just gain favor again and to assimilate back into the picture. I did forgive her. I forgave her. I wanted to believe her again. We welcomed our little ones and time marched on. I was guarded for a couple of years because I didn't want to be hurt again. You know, um, we had a very surface level relationship at that point. We saw one another at church and family gatherings, um, but that was the, you know, extent of it. It's very hard to develop a meaningful relationship when there has been such a breach of trust. If you don't have honesty and truth at the foundation of any relationship, you don't have a relationship. Within a couple years, though, I did reopen my heart back up to Tabitha, and she seemed normal again. <laughs> what I know now, but didn't understand then, is that the Jezebel spirit will hide so we all, and I definitely wanted to believe that Tabitha was delivered. She seemed normal for a two-year period and didn't exhibit many of the classic traits that she always had. So during that time, we welcomed our third child, and I actually invited Tabitha into the delivery room. So I truly had opened my heart back up to her and, you know, thought we were moving forward from all of the drama and destruction from the past behind us, you know, once and for all. It was also during this time period that I became extremely ill. I was dealing with a tumor in the center of my brain and all of the debilitating symptoms um, that accompanied that. Uh, it, was, it was killing me, you know. So I'd been super healthy for 26 years and yet all of a sudden I was just so ill. I was in and out of the hospital constantly due to the brain tumor and my quality of life was drastically changing. My health really began to, to deteriorate at a rapid pace. And at the same time, Tabitha and my family member moved about 45 minutes away. So they were no longer at our church um, or around us all the time. You know, so... I was wasting further and further away health-wise, and I ended up needing brain surgery to remove the tumor, and I suffered terribly after the fact with severe brain damage and a traumatic brain injury. So I was forced to relearn everything in my life, uh, which was extremely painful and difficult. During that time, uh, Tabitha was not around, you know. Um, I understood that they had moved away and they had a new group of friends. Um, so I just told myself that that was the reason, you know, we never saw them. Looking back now, that was wishful thinking on my part because things started to happen again that were questionable. Um, old patterns of behavior returned, distant, not just physically, but emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And once again, I was left trying to figure out what I had done wrong. I rationalized my thoughts and would brush them away, you know, not wanting to believe that Tabitha was back to her old ways. So perhaps I had done something to offend her. You know, why was she so distant again? Why did she look absolutely miserable when they would come around? Why was she evasive? You know, I didn't push the issue for an entire year. Um, but I finally felt like 
I had to say something. So at that point, I became much more emboldened. And after everything that I had gone through physically, which also grew me closer to the Lord, um, I wasn't able to just stay silent or ignore these behaviors any longer. So I prayed and I asked the Lord, you know, what he wanted me to do. And I felt him guide me to write a letter in an email. So uh, I asked the Holy Spirit to guide my words um, as I was doing this out of extreme love, yet concern for both Tabitha and my family member. So I reached out to them via phone and I told them that I would be sending my letter via email. Um, things were quite chaotic at that time with schedules, my recovery, little ones, um, you know, et cetera. So that was the method that um, I felt the Lord told me to take. So I did not come off as confrontational, but tried to lovingly as possible let her and them know that something wasn't right. You know, I was concerned that the lying had returned. Um, I didn't understand the distance between us. I was hurt and was trying to understand why the dynamics of our relationship had taken a turn for the worst again. To put it bluntly, this enraged Tabitha. The truth of the matter is, since a Jezebel is never wrong, if you contradict or confront one, get ready to become their worst enemy. As long as you are in agreement with them, all's fine. But if you confront or challenge them, look out, okay? You will become the target of their fiercest venom, at which point they will stop at nothing to destroy your reputation. Boy, did she show out after that. I did receive a response, but it wasn't one I was hoping for. She twisted everything around. Um, I became the problem. She became the victim. Everything I had said was nonsensical. Nothing was true. And she vehemently denied any wrongdoing. She explained everything away with excuses. She would apologize with, well, I'm sorry you took it that way. There was zero accountability. No remorse and nothing but explanations that were even more bizarre. Another trait of a Jezebel is that they will talk in confusion. Her emailed response was full of confusion. Confusion keeps them undiscovered and unexposed. So she vehemently denied everything I was saying and it ended with her referring to me as brain damaged and a Jezebel. So the truth of the matter is a Jezebel spirit is difficult to pin down. If the person is near to being outed, they will skillfully twist the entire situation, trying to make the innocent person look like the one. The Jezebel will do anything to look like the one who is in the right. And the innocent person is going to be the one who is looking like they're attempting to control everything. So once again, there was a familial breach and I was told at that point that I was to stay out of their relationship because it was the strongest it had ever been and they were both being so blessed by the Lord. So they were involved with the music ministry at their church and were the worship leaders. Um, so she got her heart's desire to be front and center, leading people in worship and giving prophetic words. They let me know that my concerns to them were absolutely invalid and there were no issues going on in any way. So from that moment on, I began to do spiritual warfare. I prayed diligently that the scales would be removed, um, that the darkness would be exposed by the light, um, that hearts would be receptive to the truth, and that no weapon formed against myself or my family would prosper in Jesus's name. So there was very little contact over the next one and a half years. Um, you know, we still had to get together for family gatherings, but the relationship 
you know, was done. There was no solid ground for one at that point. So after warring in the spirit during that time and commanding every evil and vile spirit to be exposed and removed, my prayers were answered. Tabitha left her family. She was in another relationship. She was no longer around our family, but so much damage had already been done. So after she left, I was contacted by many different people that at one point in time had been influenced by her and things were revealed that had been ongoing throughout the entire 15 years of our relationship. So lies were exposed, character assassinations were revealed, um, apologies were given to me because these people believed and um, like believed and were controlled by the Jezebel spirit that operated through Tabitha. They listened to the lies that she spread behind the scenes so for years. That is exa that's exactly what a Jezebel will do. Okay, they will poison and pit people against one another. They sow so much drama and discord. Um, and when left unchecked, it absolutely can destroy relationships. So we had seen so much of that during the years. And unfortunately, even since now, even since she's gone elsewhere, none of that has stopped. You know, I, I've lost more friends. I've discovered more lies. I have seen more ways that this evil spirit is manipulating and controlling things behind the scenes. There is a breach between myself and even, even other family members now as well. Uh, this goes to show how manipulative and recalcitrant this spirit is. And it literally wants to steal peace, steal joy, steal stability, steal relationships. It wants to kill those that it controls and those it has targeted. And uh, it wants to kill the moves of the spirit. It wants to kill the spirit of prophecy. It wants to kill sound doctrine. It wants to destroy everything in its path. This is the reason the Lord gave such a stern warning to the church at Thyatira. The warning is to no longer tolerate or allow this spirit to operate in ministries, in homes, in churches, in businesses, and in relationships. I didn't understand these things years ago. Okay? Um, I didn't understand or know who or what I was dealing with. So my issue was not with Tabitha. My issue was with the Jezebel narcissistic spirit that has uh, infiltrated my family and in my mind and my emotions. You know, these things greatly affected me even physically. That's another sign, red flag, that you are dealing with um, an evil spirit. You know, it manifests in the physical. So I have suffered exponentially, uh, physically, mentally, and emotionally at the hands of this, you know. But God, God has revealed his truth and the power that we have through the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, Almighty God, our Father, and the living, breathing Word of God. So we are more than conquerors, and there is freedom, you know. So um, that's the story. And it the story is not over. It continues. So um, because it continues, I would like to now, you know, strategically target bullet points um, of what to look out for when dealing with these individuals. So I have dealt with this individual for many years. Um, things are still absolutely chaotic with them. And so uh, I have to give the warning, warning signs, warning things to look out for so that you are not um, tolerating or allowing 
an individual with this demonic spirit to operate and control you. So that will be part six. I'm going to start getting into the bullet points of the traits and characteristics that you really got to look out for.